Welcome back. Today I'm here with the next installment of my fantasy recommendation series. I love fantasy, I read a lot of fantasy, and so I'm creating a playlist of videos where I recommend to you curated lists of different types of fantasy depending on what you might be looking for. In today's video I'm going to be recommending eight picks for books or series that are fantasy romance. So if you want fantasy that is more heavily focused on romance, where romance is most of the plot or a big part of the plot, then these are the series or books for you. My first recommendation is one that I think more people should know about. This is The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I absolutely loved this novel and this is going to be for those of you who like classic romances. This one feels like a Latinx mashup of Jane Austen and the Bronte sisters with magic. It's fantastic. I really loved it. If you like that sort of classic romance that's really focused on courtship and the slow burn and development of relationships, don't mind having things get a little bit dark before maybe they get better, and are looking for a little bit of magic as a part of the story, then I'm going to recommend The Beautiful Ones by Silvio Moreno-Garcia. It is a slow burn, it's very character driven, and it reminds me a lot of classic romances. It's not quite as dark as the Bronte sisters, but it's definitely not as light as Jane Austen, so yeah. I loved this. Go check it out. Next I'm actually going to recommend an author who is really big in young adult and new adult literature because I think that fantasy romance is really the category that she should be considered a part of, and that is Sarah J Mass. So here I have Throne of Glass, which is the first in one of her popular series. The first book in the series is a very very loose retelling of Cinderella. If Cinderella was like a really feminine assassin. Um, it's really fun. I love it. This is probably my favorite of the series, but I have read all of her books. She also has the Court of Thorns and Roses series, which is more of a fairy style fantasy romance. But if you're looking for something like that where a lot of the attention is placed on the romance and on the relationships in the book and less on the action and world building fantasy part of it, I would recommend you go check out Sarah J Maas because I think that's really where she shines. You do be aware that in her Court of Thorns and Roses series there is a lot of explicit sexual content and starting at I think book four of the Throne of Glass series you start getting a bit of that as well. So I don't really have a problem with that but if you are young or if you're concerned about it do be aware that that is in here. But um, yeah I think that she is good if you consider her as a fantasy romance author. Maybe less if you're trying to look at her as like an epic fantasy author then you run into some more problems. My next recommendation is for those of you who are into a little bit of steampunk and paranormal parts of your romance. This is Soulless, the first in the Parasol Protectorate series by Gail Carriger. I love this series. I think it is so fun and funny. It does not appeal to everyone. She has a very particular style and tone, so I would say try it and see if you like it, because if you do, you're gonna love all of her books. She's very tongue-in-cheek. This is set in an alternate Victorian England where there are werewolves and vampires and ghosts. It is a romance. It's pretty light on the smut, but there is some of it, especially in this first book. I just love it. It's also got like a mystery element to it throughout the series and Alexia Terabody, the main character, is one of my favorite female characters. She's like so funny. She's this like snarky old maid with no magic who ends up falling for a super gruff werewolf and it's just it's really great. So um, I'm gonna recommend the Parasol Protectorate series. Next I'm gonna recommend to you the first in a YA fantasy series and I would call this partly fantasy romance, although I think later in the series there's a lot more political intrigue and character development, which is part of what I loved so much about it. There's a lot of really great world building that happens in this, but romance is a pretty central part of the plot. So I'm going to recommend Kiss of Deception, book one in the Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. This one in particular I think focuses a lot on this love triangle romance element of the book, but there's a lot of adventure, there's action, there's great world building. There's a lot of things that I like about this book, but I thought that it fit nicely into this category. So if you're looking for something that is really a fantasy novel and has some epic elements to it, but is heavier on the romance, go check out this series. Next, if you're looking for diverse fantasy romance, I'm going to recommend Song of Blood and Stone by Elle Penelope. I really enjoyed this. This was her debut adult fantasy romance book. It is heavy on the romance, but it also deals with some bigger issues like race relations and biracial identity and 
interracial romance and the political aspects of that and so there is a heavy romance in here but there's also some like interesting issues that she's considering I really enjoyed it go check it out and finally I have three books that I want to recommend to you that are all books by indie authors a lot of really great fantasy romance stuff is happening in the indie community so I think that can be a good place to go to these books are all quite different from each other in a variety of ways but I would call them all fantasy romances in one way or another the first one is The Last Dragon Princess by Cynthia C. Payne. This is her debut novel. I've talked about this in other videos on my channel before because I really loved it a lot. But this one has dragon shifters, it has lots of political intrigue, and the main character does develop romantic relationships with multiple men in different ways before the end of the book. She doesn't end up with multiple men, but that is an element of it and the romance is a big part of this. It also takes a really really cool twist later in the book. I loved a lot of things about this but I can't say too much without spoiling it so I'm just gonna say it's great. Go check it out. The next indie book on this list is Wolves and Roses by Christina Bauer first book in the Fairy Tales of the Magic Quorum series. This is really fun. It definitely feels like an urban fantasy romance that is also retelling some fairy tales for a YA audience. I really enjoyed it. I liked the romance elements to it. It feels like a paranormal romance slash urban fantasy type thing but with some fairy tale elements. So um, yeah, it's fun. And the final book on this list is definitely Romance Romance and I loved it. This is actually a book that I picked up because my friend Leanna over at Leanna's library adores it and has read it multiple times. I finally read it and it is very very good. This is Radiance by Grace Draven and I think in general she is known for being a really good fantasy romance author so you might go check her out for other books. This is the only one of hers that I've read so far but I've heard really great things about her other books as well. This one is kind of a slow burn romance and it's very very good. It follows two characters who get married for political reasons but they come from different species that find each other physically repulsive. However, being who they are, they're kind and they're logical people so they decide they're going to make the best of it and develop a friendship and that friendship eventually turns into a romance and it's really really beautiful. I loved this. I think it's great. I think if you're looking for something that's low angst where all of the conflict and the relationship is external to the couple, this is a really great pick for you. They have a fantastic relationship with really great communication with each other which you don't see a lot of and so all of the conflict in the book is coming from things that are happening to them from the outside not from miscommunication between the two of them. I think it's really beautiful. This one does have some explicit sex scenes later on in the book so that is there whether you want it or you don't be aware, but I think it's a really great pick. So there you have it. Those are my recommendations to you if you are looking for some great fantasy romance in your life. Uh, talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on the books that I talked about and tell me if you would recommend any other books that fall into this category because I'm sure there's plenty more where this came from. Question of the day, tell me what is one of your favorite fantasy romances and why? If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.